Bill, um, this home builder sentiment number that we saw today, small business sentiment we saw last week, and these are industry insiders who, who are saying something amazing is happening, and you know firsthand, of course. Sure. You know, in U.S. Concrete, we've derived 25% of our revenues from um, single-family and multi-family residential housing, so it's very important to us. But you have to understand right now, the, uh, take Dallas, for instance. The permits through October, single-family building permits through October of this year, are still 26% below the peak in 2005. The use of ready-mix concrete around the country is still only 75% of what it was in 2005. So we think this sentiment well, is well-founded. Well, this report said that one of the problems is that over the last five years, Regulations alone have added anywhere between 25 and 30 percent to the cost. Uh, so I mean, it's it's pretty tough in this sort of environment. Then you add on perhaps the negative impact of a Dodd Frank when it's harder to get a loan, and that would explain a lot of it, wouldn't it? Sure, sure. There's a, a large pent up demand for housing and housing needs and housing stock. Veronica, tell tell us. Uh, you're, you're the economic guru here, so you look at all of these things and you put them, you frame them up. I mean, it, it pretty much if you connect the dots, they say the same thing. There's a tremendous amount of Op optimism about what could be next year. There is a lot of optimism out there. Uh, what would be great for home buyers, though, if this builder sentiment turns into actual housing? There's been such a shortage of housing, and that's been difficult for buyers. So we want to see that happen because if uh, mortgage rates are going up and there's still lack of inventory, that could put a lot of pressure on the consumer. Overall, though, there's a lot of positive sentiment. I think people need to realize, though, a lot of this positive sentiment is based on what's proposed. We haven't seen actual policy yet. So there's not going to be What do we need to see the first 100 days? I mean, to, to keep this going, to, to put this optimism, to make it to come to fruition. So a lot of the financial advisors I speak to on my podcast tell me a time and time again, because many of them are small business owners, but also deal with <laughs> CEOs, and they say, we need this tax reform. We've been asking for this tax, corporate tax reform for a very long time. That's going to help us hire. That's going to help us grow, uh, expand our business, and feel more confident about the U.S. economy. That, that's the number one thing I hear time and time again. Now, Bill, is there any truth to the fact that they say, if you look at every still photo of a Trump rally, there was a guy in there holding a sign and said, build that wall. And it was, if you take a magnifying glass, it was you. <laughs> there's, there's no you guys make a lot of money off that there's, wall. There's, there's no truth to that rule. Really. We were doing fine without the wall. We do have portable operations that can be deployed anywhere in the country. If there are opportunities, we'll bid on them. But we're not counting that in our long range the, plan. Uh, but, but the uh, civil engineers, the, the Society of C Civil Engineers, give our infrastructure a D minus. Correct. They say it would take $3.9 trillion. Correct. I mean, you must, every time that number pops in your head in the middle of the night, you must get up and do a few jumping jacks and go back to bed. <laughs> the opportunities are there, and you have an administration that says they may put as much as a trillion dollars toward this over the next decade. Absolutely. 15% of our revenues are, are to the infrastructure segment. Uh, the proof will be in the pudding, how, how the financing comes about. There's no doubt in our mind, though, that there will be improved uh, financing of infrastructure projects going forward with the Trump administration. Are you concerned, though, that the same thing may happen with the so-called shovel-ready project, that the money, once it gets to state, somehow falls through the bureaucratic, uh, bureaucratic cracks in a wall? Uh, you know, no one knows where it goes, and, and, and it just doesn't live up to the hype. No, I, I'm not concerned about that. What I'm more concerned about is the, the length of time it will take to deploy those funds. So we're not really looking for anything in 2017. Even the FAST stack that was, that was uh, passed in 2015, we're really looking for that impact in 2017. But the Trump inf infrastructure plan... Well, your confidence is going to come now. Your I'm confident. confident it's coming. And how confident are you that, that this can keep going? Because some of it becomes self-fulfilling, right? If we feel better, and it's a virtuous cycle that the Fed could never create by printing money. But I think it's organically happening anyway now. I, I think it is. You know, it's going to be really interesting to see if this wealth effect, which I think is what you're referring to, takes hold. If people see their 401k balances get bigger, are they going to feel richer? And are they going to spend this holiday season? If you look at retailers like Macy's, they are really betting on this. They're hoping this happens. Um, across the board, though, I think one of the big risks to the home builders um, in general is Trump's uh, potential stance on immigration. What is his policy? going to be there because if you look at the home builders many of them I think it's like one in four of their laborers are immigrants and wouldn't, wouldn't so, there be some Americans sitting around right now who want well, that job if it, so. if it shows up I, I certainly hope so right. we know there's plenty of people I'll be underemployed. honest with you in Jersey we've got a lot of folks who I'm not sure if they're legal or illegal uh, who are in the construction business and I know that there are a lot of Americans who 
say they wish they can get those jobs. Bill, I don't know if you want to opine on that real quick. Well, I think the labor participation rate is an all-time low. If we can get yeah. some, there are workers sitting at home. Yeah. If we can get good, high-paying jobs for them, I think they'll come back. Sounds great. Thank you both very much.